At long last, I'm getting back into my series on Capture One editing, and today is going to be all about levels. Most importantly, I'm going to explain how the levels tool works. A lot of tutorials on the web explain what to do, but they don't explain or describe why you're doing it. So today I'm going to look at the levels tool and I'm going to try to describe why we move the nubs in certain ways to be able to level out our image. It's a fairly comprehensive tutorial, so use the chapters below to bounce to pertinent sections if you already have a grasp on how the Levels tool works. And of course, please remember to drop a like and a subscribe if you would like to be informed of future tutorials similar to this one. Right, let's jump into it. So I have a couple of images I'm going to look at to illustrate how the Levels control works. Now, before going any further, you need to understand that the Levels is only one way in which we can actually adjust the contrast range inside an image. It's more effective than using the contrast slider. What the contrast slider is, it basically darkens your darks and lightens your lights, or vice versa if you want to reduce contrast, but it does it in a very brute force manner. When you're working with levels, what you're doing is you're identifying where you want your highlight point to end up and where you want your dark or black point to end up. So to make life easier, I'm actually going to look at the screen in full view, but first I'm going to pull out my histogram and I'm going to pull out my levels control itself and I'm going to show how we can edit the photograph using just those two. Uh, I'm going to hit my uh, F button so that we can basically see just those two and you can see the image in the background which is of the Mullet Sunyani Falls in Lesotho taken on a workshop earlier this year. In this panel, you can see I've got my histogram um, I think I should try and make it a bit bigger so we can actually see what we're doing over here. There we go. Right, so I have my histogram and I've got my levels control. As you probably know, the histogram is going to give you a graphic representation of where the tones in your photograph lie. So you can see from this histogram that I don't have any true pitch black points inside the photograph. I've got quite a lot of shadow, as you can see here on the left hand side. And then we've got our highlights and our brights here, but they're actually quite dim and you can evidence that by the fact that there's quite a large gap between the highlight over here with this red channel and the end of the histogram itself. So that's what the histogram is telling us. Now if I were to use just a straight contrast curve what would happen, and in fact let me open that up so you can see, if I were to use a straight contrast curve or contrast all we would do is we would stretch out the, uh, the contrast and we would make our shadows go to the left and our highlights go to the right and you would end up with this crunchy black in the middle. Okay, that's not what we want. So I'm going to reset that and we're going to come back out. So what the levels does instead is that we can choose our black point and our white point. And this is where this is important that we understand what the levels is doing. If you look at the dialogue, the nubs in the bottom left hand corner and the bottom right hand corner are indicating our input levels. So what where we believe the black point of the image should be and where we believe the white point of the image should be. The top nubs here on the top left and here on the top right, these are our output levels. So in a simple way, if I say I'm going to input a certain amount, it's going to go to what my output amount is. Now the basic concept behind this is that zero is black and 255 is pure white. These are our levels that we get inside our tonal range inside a photograph. There are 256 discrete tones, 0 to 255. If I place my nub somewhere inside that range, what I'm effectively doing is I'm saying that where I have placed my nub is now 0. So here is our output level up here. 0. And here is our output level on the right hand side, 255. So if I bring my input level inwards, you can see here I've got it up at 5. It means that I'm taking that 5 and I'm turning that 5 into 0. All right. This is important because it means that anything that is to the left of that point is now pure black. And that's exactly how clipping works inside any kind of histogram. So if I were to take my out input level in the highlights over here and bring it to the left hand side, you'll see the entire image brightens up and my input point here is 197, but the output is 255. So in other words, where this point now lies is pure white in the image itself. So I've set what we call a white point. So levels is an effective way to set white point and black point. You can do this automatically, obviously. 
a lot of programs allow you to do something in an automatic vein. The problem with automatic is it doesn't always work. Here's the button for automatic in uh, Capture One. If I click this, you'll see the image automatically levels. And we've got our black point has come into six and our white point has come into 196. The problem with this is if we look in closely, you can see that I've actually clipped some of the colors inside the levels tool itself. So it means that we are going beyond black point in a way. There's going to be some crunchiness to my shadows. So I prefer not using a automatic levels um, control. What I prefer to do is using my eyes effectively, we're going to take our white slider and bring it in and you can see that we have now leveled out nicely in the histogram. I'm not clipping even in my red channel and I can do the same with my blacks. So effectively, I've increased contrast in the image by spreading out the, the tonal range into the full 256 discrete tones and I've added contrast, but I've done it intelligently, not like the contrast slider, which just does it with brute force. If I want to lighten my image or darken my image, I can take my middle gray slider. It's also known as a gamma slider. By pulling that to the right, we're now saying that everything to the left of the nub and to the black nub over here, or the black point slider, is going to be crushed into the shadows section of the image. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm darkening my image while still maintaining my white point and my black point. If I wanted to lighten my midtones, I would go the other way. And you can see, there we go. I've now lightened the midtones inside that photograph. If you want to see a quick before and after, here it is without the levels control included. Here it is with the levels control. So it is an intelligent way of adding contrast to a photograph. Let's take a look at another photograph quickly, which gives a better impression of how we're able to do this. So this photograph was taken in Namibia and you can see that there is a lack of contrast in the photograph itself. If you look carefully, you can see that the shadows are not pure black, the lights are not pure white, and there's lots of space on the edge of the histogram on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side of the image. Using the same approach that I used just now with the photograph from Malatsunyani, if I take my black point slider and I bring it into the edge of the histogram, you'll see how I've suddenly added a huge amount of contrast to the image, but I haven't clipped anywhere because I haven't used the, autos, uh, the auto tool. I can do the same with my highlights over here and I can drag them into the foreground, or into the point where I feel it's gonna start clipping. There you go. And there you go, we've added contrast to our image. Here's our before and after. So it's a far more efficient and effective way of adding contrast to a photograph without actually crushing our blacks or blowing out our highlights. Again, if I need to add more detail into my shadow, I can take my gray slider and I can move it out to the left, essentially reducing contrast in a way in that regard. But again, I can also bring in my, uh, my black slider once more. There are ways that Capture One and Photoshop, if you were to go into Photoshop, try and speed up the process by giving you pickers. If I take my black point picker and I select it, you'll notice that there is an orange line that slides about on the histogram itself and on the levels histogram too. This is an indicator of whatever tone I happen to have my picker over at that moment in time. If I use my black point picker and I actually click it onto the screen over that tone, it means that everything from that orange line towards the black point is going to come out as black. So you can see by doing this, I've increased the contrast and my shadows in this particular image. Similarly, by taking the white point picker, I would then select a uh, tone that I believe to be my white point, and by clicking on that, everything from that orange line through to the highlights is going to be white. Obviously for this image, this is excessive. I don't have an actual black point and a white point, so this isn't the best way to select my tones for this particular image. However, if you do have an image where there is a very obvious single black tone and a obvious single white tone, you can use those tones in the photograph to be able to accurately level out so that you have a full gradate, gradated range of tones from black to white. 
Something else about the levels control though is that we can also change our color. You can color grade with the, uh, with the levels control, which is why we have the RGB red, green, and blue channels over here. So if I look at an image and I think that there is too much green, for instance, in my image, I can go into the green and you'll see that if I take my highlight slider, it increases the green. And if I take my black slider, it's going to reduce it and go towards the opposite of green, which is magenta. So you'll find that you can actually color grade your image as well. This, this particular image doesn't necessarily need much color grading, if any for that matter, but the same process can be used for images where there is a need for color grading. More importantly though, is that we can also control the shadows inside an image. And I have a complicated photo here if I look at this particular image. So I'm just gonna go back into full screen. Now this is a difficult image to edit for the fact that the foreground is very, very dark. It looks almost, that, in fact, it probably is clipping in the shadows over here. Highlights are pretty good. I can't really bring or increase my contrast in any way without actually damaging the photograph. However, there is detail inside my shadows and I can open that up simply by taking my middle gray slider and pulling it towards the left. And you'll notice that suddenly it brings out the foreground itself. So you are able to increase the, um, the amount of detail inside your shadows while still retaining your white and your black point. Something else to be aware of over here is that we can also change the output of the photograph itself. So if I have too much contrast, I can actually reduce that contrast by taking my output and bringing it more to the right. And I can take my output on my highlights and I can bring that into the left if I, if I wanted to. So you don't just use levels in terms of saying, where's my black point, where's my white point, you can actually go in and you can change the output of what your black point should be and what your white point should be. Okay, I now have another photograph over here taken in Lupatana on the wild coast of South Africa. Also um, showing the same kind of situation where we have space in our shadows and space in, or space in our blacks and space in our whites where we can actually compress or expand, sorry, compress is the wrong word, where we can expand our contrast so that it fits the entire range from black through to white and thereby increasing contrast and perceived clarity of an image. So I'm gonna take my black slider and I'm gonna bring it in. I'm gonna take my white slider, I'm gonna bring it in and immediately you can see a change both in the color intensity and clarity as well as the tonal range of the photograph itself. I can play a little bit with my central sliders if I want to. I think it needs a little bit more darkness over there and I will tweak my lights again just a touch. I think the photograph is exhibiting a touch too much blue. The opposite of blue would be red. So I'm going to increase some red inside my photograph. There we go. Just by taking the highlight slider to bring that in a touch. Yeah, that's it. And probably a little bit more inside my mid-tones there. Very, very small uh, movement, but it works. That's exactly how I would do it. And there you go. To take a look at the before image, we've got that. And then just using the level slider, we have this. So massive difference just using the one control. The level slider, as I mentioned earlier, is only one way in which to control your your contrast range inside a photograph. I personally prefer the curves control, which is a far more um, comprehensive tool where you can add contrast to different portions of the image, whereas the levels tool is a step above the contrast slider, but a step below the curve slider. It is, however, one of the easier controls to work quickly, and if you are still getting into grips with using Capture One or any of the editing software platforms that have a levels control, the levels is an easier control to master before you move on to the curves control. So despite the fact that I prefer the curves control, if I'm doing fast, quick edits, the levels control or the levels panel is by far the easiest to use to get good contrast range without having to resort to the bludgeoning tool of the curves slider. I'm not a massive fan of auto adjustments, I have to admit. However, there is a use for these adjustments and Capture One does allow us to indicate what we would like have as auto controls and what we want to do manually. And one of the things I love about it is the fact that I can adjust my levels so that it's the only auto jump. 
So if I'm doing big batch editing, it's a way to get through a lot of images very quickly. Now the way to do this is in Capture One, you're gonna go into your um, editing develop uh, window or your adjust window and under auto adjust at the top, you'll see you have a drop down menu and you can choose what you want to have as auto. So for instance, I can just click on levels and it means that when I go into my image and I hit command L, you can see with my highlight exposure warning that I'm clipping quite substantially inside my waves. Of course, the highlight warning is also giving you some safety net as well. And you can see this by going into your preferences. So in the levels control itself, in the top right corner, you'll see there's a preferences tab in the menu. And our highlight warning is actually at 250. You can always bring that back if you want, or bring, bring that up to 255 to see the exact point that it's clipping. But it is still quite aggressive. So I'm gonna take that back to 255 or 250 because that is, it's useful having that little bit of a safety margin. And if you look at the bottom, you'll see that the auto levels clipping thresholds are 0.1% both on the shadows and the highlights. That's quite aggressive. What that's doing is it's actually coming into our black point and into our white point. So it means that your whites are gonna clip out ever so slightly as are your blacks on the left-hand side of the histogram. So what we can do is we can actually adjust that so that it is more accurate at least not more accurate, but it's gonna be closer to our true white point and true black point. And you can do that by clicking on pick target levels, making sure that that's zero and 255. And then we're going to take our auto level clipping and we're going to set that back to zero in both cases. So we have it at zero and zero. I'm now gonna go back to my image and I'm going to hit the auto tone again using the levels control. So command L and you'll notice that this time around there is far less clipping involved in my sky. And in fact, if I go into my preferences over here and we take a look without, there's even less clipping. There is still a little bit that is happening inside my frame, but that's not a problem. I can still take my levels tool and I can bring that back just a touch. Or if I want to, I can even go up to my high dynamic range panel and I can bring my highlights back to be able to bring back my highlights without actually clipping those. Right, so that is a basic workflow in how we can edit an image using just the levels control. Importantly, it allows us to place where our blackest points on the images, where our lightest points on the images, and then to work out where inside the histogram your shadows are gonna start and your highlights are gonna start, and basically the layout of your tones inside the image using just one control. If you've enjoyed the video, please remember to pop a subscribe and a like in the bottom. Leave any comments that you may have in the field down below the video, and I will endeavor to get back to you as soon as possible. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Cheers.